Wouldn't it be nice to know a simple trick that could actually have you studying less and remembering more than ever? As a junior in college, I learned a technique that enabled me to study less than every other student in the class and yet get the highest score in the class. Let's talk about that. If I can do it, anybody can do it. As a student in college, I had a 3.21 average when I graduated and I did that with quite a bit of study. I worked a lot to get that 3.21 but I had decided I was going to go on to grad school about the time I was a junior in college. And all my friends who were in grad school said, oh man, you better get ready to really work. You're going to have to be studying twice as much. Those professors require a lot more from you in grad school. There's so much more reading and studying that you have to do. It's just really tough. And they scared me. And I don't have the greatest memory in the world anyway. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've got a very bad memory. In fact, I had a roommate in college that lived with me for an entire semester. The guy moved out. Two weeks later, I ran into him on campus, and I couldn't remember his name. It was completely gone. This sort of thing happened to me all the time. So I really got concerned, and I started going out and looking in the psychological research and research about memory and memory improvement, and I found some fantastic techniques that really took care of these problems and made my life much easier as a student. In fact, in grad school, I was able to get a perfect 4.0. I didn't do any more studying than I had done as an undergrad, and I was doing considerably less study uh, studying than most of my colleagues. I had a lot more free time on the evenings and weekends to do whatever I want to, and my profs were absolutely amazed. In fact, they would ask me questions in class when they couldn't remember stuff. Me, the guy with a horrible memory, they were asking questions about how to remember certain things. So here's the basic technique. First of all, I took a class uh, my first semester of grad school on human osteology, that is bones. And our first test was on all the bones in the human cranium. 23 different bones in the human cranium. Ethmoid, sphenoid, zygomatic, occipital, parietal, blah, blah, blah. All of these words that I'd never heard before and that certainly had uh, no innate memorableness to me at any rate. We had to know all of those bones in the cranium. We had to be able to identify them. We had to know what other bones they connected with, what they articulated with. Well, the ethmoid, for example, articulates with 12 other bones. And, of course, it's a tight place. All of those bones are articulating with the same bones, so it's a lot of overlapping information. It was a ton of stuff to study, and it was very difficult to keep all of that information straight, especially doing all this for one test. But using the method I'm about to show you, I finished studying for this test in under 30 minutes. I got the only 100 in the class. The average class score was a 72. And as we were walking out the door of the class, I heard people talking, man, I studied eight hours for this. I studied 10 hours for this test. I was amazed. I was so excited because me, the guy with the horrible memory, I was the only one who got that perfect score and I did it with so much less studying than the rest of the people in class. I was hooked on learning these sorts of techniques and skills and I was completely sold on how valuable and powerful they were. In fact, I was mad because nobody had taught me this stuff before. It would have made my life uh, my academic life especially so much easier. So here's exactly what I did. First of all, I came up with a simple symbol to uh, help me remember each one of those bones. For example, occipital, the occipital bone, that sounds like ox to me. So from then on, I use the ox to symbolize the occipital bone. Parietal, parietal sounds like parrot, so I used a parrot to symbolize the parietal bone. Now, to remember that any two bones were linked together, all I had to do was imagine their symbols interacting somehow. So knowing that the parietal and the occipital touch each other, I could just imagine a parrot riding an ox, for example. Or if I really want to make that a strong memory, I can make it something unusual, interesting, strange, funny. Make it a tiny, tiny ox riding a gigantic parrot. Then on the test, when they asked me about the parietal bone, all I had to do was remember my parrot, and I could remember that parrot uh, being ridden by this tiny little ox. And I knew, oh, the parietal connects with the occipital bone. It was very powerful. And as I said, I was able to do that to all the bones in under 30 minutes and get the only perfect score in the class. So here's the basic technique for you to apply to whatever 
uh, you're trying to memorize. Come up with visual symbols that are easy for you to picture. It can be actions as well, such as run or uh, shout or whatever, but something that's easy for you to picture in your head. Then link those symbols together. Now, I've used this specifically with osteology, but really you can use it with anything. I've also used it to memorize my history. I've used it to memorize chemistry. For example, in the, Craig, uh, the Krebs cycle in chemistry, learning the steps in, in that process, in that Krebs cycle, I would link each thing to the next thing. So ATP, I picture a, a, a teepee, a Native American teepee, and you can link that to uh, ADP, and I came up with a symbol for ADP, and I link those, each one of those things together. I've used it in math to memorize formulas. You give me a big, long formula, and I can come up with a way to symbolize each piece in that formula, and I link one of them to the next until I've got the whole thing memorized. And then uh, one key is to actually make those links active and interesting. For example, if I was trying to link goose to bowling ball, uh, having a goose standing on top of a bowling ball is one way to link those, but it's not very active and it's not very interesting. If I imagine a goose trying to lay a bowling ball, that's a lot more interesting and a lot more memorable. If I imagine a gigantic 20-story tall bowling ball rolling down the middle of Main Street and breaking against a big building and millions of geese fly out covering the whole city. That's really memorable. The more I get my senses involved in this, if I imagine hearing it, seeing it, tasting it, touching it, smelling it, feeling it, it's going to be a much stronger symbol as well. But by applying those, you can memorize pretty much anything that you have to memorize. This is a powerful technique, and it revolutionized the way I studied in college. This is exactly what I used to help me get that perfect 4-0 as I went through college. Me, the guy with a horrible memory. I could do it. You can do it too.